Hello and welcome, I'm Sadie and today we're going to be doing an art session based around the very hungry caterpillar. Now Eric Carle has a beautiful style with his illustrations, as we can see everybody knows the picture of the hungry caterpillar and his illustrations are beautifully done. He uses a collage technique where he makes lots of painted papers of different colours with different paints and different techniques that he uses and then he cuts them out to put them together into one beautiful picture. Now we haven't always got time to be doing lovely beautiful painted papers and making those so today's session is going to be a quicker way of making the iconic Very Hungry Caterpillar but we're going to be using an artist um, from Africa. So Joseph Amidoko, he's from Togo originally and he trained in Nigeria and then moved back to Togo to be an artist, a full-time artist. Now he uses bright colours, lots of lovely lines and abstract shapes in his designs and they come, the ideas of his designs come from his dreams where he has lots of African traditions and cultural images that come into his mind in his night and then the next morning he writes them down and he makes his artwork from them. So he uses lots of really strong lines to make his patterns and then he uses lots of really bright colours. So that's what we're going to do for our Very Hungry Caterpillar. We're going to decorate him full of lovely bright colourful patterns and lines. The materials you will need are quite simple. Everybody should have these with them at home. They're simply a pencil and you need some black pens, black finer liner pens. Now if you're going to paint this then you'll need to use a waterproof pen, so something like a sharpie or a permanent marker. Um, and then your colouring in, you could do it as with pencil crayons or you could do it with paint, um, whatever paints you have at home. So whether they're watercolours, different types of watercolours or something a bit more if you've got some gouache and then obviously some paint brushes. And that's all you need. So the first thing I've done is by drawing a pencil outline of the Hungry Caterpillar, just using the book as a reference. Now, the Hungry Caterpillar on the book has got very thin segments for his body and obviously we want to have plenty of room for our, our pattern today. So I've made our th segments a bit thicker. So you might want to do that by pencil like I've done first just to make sure that they're the right size and obviously you can rub them out and do them again if you're not happy with them. So the next job you can do is using your black pens. Um, I've got two here. I've got a thin one that's a bit thinner. And I've got one that's a brush one, which is a bit thicker. So it means that you can add a bit of variety in the shape and the width of your line. So the next thing I'm going to do is start by going over the outline for my caterpillar. And just using the pencil lines, because obviously these you can rub away later. So you start by doing the first circle at the end. And then you go off that circle and join to make your next circle, which is the next segment of his body. And then you carry on all the way through, each segment at a time, going over your lines, your pencil lines, and obviously these we will rub out in a moment. All the way until we get to the end. Now obviously if you wanted to, you could do it with a thicker pen to start with. Or you could just stick with a thinner one. Depending on what you've got, it really doesn't matter. And then obviously he needs his little antlers there. And his eyes. Big, wide eyes. Then the final job is for you to add on his feet. Now he can have as many as you want. The next job then is to start adding in the pattern and the lines for your each segment of your caterpillar. Now these could be swirly lines, straight lines, you can make shapes with them as well, so doing triangles or squares, we could do lines with dots, big swirls, small wave-like ones as well. The choice is you, up to you, so you can do whatever you fancy in there. So I'm going to start adding in mine. You might want to start doing this in pencil maybe because if you're not quite sure what you want to do you might want to try something out first in pencil to see what it looks like to see if you're happy with it and then if so you can keep doing it if not you can just start straight in pen it's up to you 
or you can also start by just getting a plain piece of paper and practicing some of your patterns to see how they look, to see if that's what you want to do as well. And it's always nice to have a bit of a play. So that's my first one done. I'm gonna carry on and finish the rest of them off. In each of the segments, I've gone and put some detail and some pattern and lines in each of them. Some of them I've started with doing a shape, like this one, I've done a triangle and then added more in. Or others I've just done wavy lines and I've just made patterns as well in there. Um, it's done a square rectangular shape in that one. And then obviously I started with swirls over here. And what I really like is the fact that you can always add to it. So if you haven't got much time, you can just end there and start doing your painting. Or if not, you want to spend some more time doodling, you can. So for example, I've started here now by just making some of these swirls stand out a bit more by drawing over them to make the line a bit thicker. And you can do that on each of them or just a few of them just to make it stand out that little bit better. Or you can add more detail around the edges. So for example, I could just start by doing some simple circles with dots going all the way around the outside of the segment here, just to add that little bit more detail in it. To make it stand out that little bit more. So there we go. Next stage is to start painting. So when you start painting, you can obviously choose whatever paints you have. Um, I've got some gouache paints here, but you can use watercolours, or again, you could use pencil crayons or any other things that you've got that you think would be really nice. They've got to be nice and bright colours as well. So the first colour I'm going for here is a bright orange. And you can either paint in the little sections. So I'm going to start by first off just doing this one here. Now you could do them all the same colour, so they could all be orange these ones, or I could choose a different colour. So I'm going to put a bit of a pink on the next one. A bit more pink on there. Should have probably wiped my brush a bit better. There we go, it's coming through now. So there's the pink coming through, ready pink. Or you could choose to go next for a nice, maybe bright blue. Look how those colours really pop out, nice and bright, like Joseph's. There we go. So just carry on painting all the way through your caterpillar. So now that you're done with your painting, you can get your flat, flat pen again to just go over any areas that just need tidying up. Or also go around any of the lines that now you've painted over them, might have lost their brightness. So you can go over those just to make those stand out again. Also, what you can do is if you've painted it, you can use some pencil crayon now just to go over any extra details that you wish. Um, for example, I wanted to paint these in colour these in blue. These little detailed bits here, I can. Because obviously some bits are just too much to get with the paintbrush. Um, or you can just actually make any further details stand out. So for example, I could colour this bit in here orange now. Just to make that stand out a bit further. 
bit brighter. I hope you've enjoyed making your really bright and colourful, very hungry caterpillar to celebrate World Book Day this year. Thanks for joining. Bye.